Okay, here we are a few days into July now. We are into the second half of 2021. You know what that means, right? It's time for a little bit of a mid-year check-in, kind of a halfway home point. Let's talk about the best of 2021 so far. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with a little bit of a mid-season checkup, the all-star break, if you will. We are at the halfway point of 2021. I thought this was a good time to kind of check in, see how goals are going, see how growth is going, see what my favorite books have been so far, see what maybe some of my disappointments have been, those kinds of things. I think that that's a lot of fun to do, and i got to give credit to other content creators who got this video out before I did, so I'm sure I'll be accused of stealing it. <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, I feel like this is just a basic video that just about every booktuber out there does. And I'm no different because I have a lot of these same things that I would like to talk about. Now, this isn't like a awards or anything like that. You're not going to be like best new character or something like that. Best kiss. You know, this isn't the MTV movie awards or nothing. Uh, what this is just, it's kind of like my monthly wrap ups, except I'm going to be doing it for the first six months of the year. But I'm going to change it a little bit so you're not just like, hey, that's the same video you just did last week. So let's get into it, guys. Let's get into what I have read so far this year. I have read 58 books altogether. Now, I like to divide these because there are a lot of people out there who don't consider comic books uh, you know, worthy of being called a book. So uh, 42 of those have been books or novels, and 16 have been some manga issues. Now I want to get into uh, the reason I've divided it this way, like I said, because a lot of people don't consider this. I consider this very much, if you're reading, I don't care what it is. If you don't want to count that as a book, okay. You know, because uh, these, these manga are like 250 pages, but you know, you're not reading 250 pages worth of text. I get it. I get why people don't want to do it, but me, I'm always going to count them because, again, as long as you're reading, guys, I don't care if it's Twilight. It counts to me. So, guys, that's why I will put it there. As 58 books I've read, I did move, when I started incorporating manga into my Goodreads, I did move my goal up to 100 books this year. So uh, I think about 40 of those will be manga and about 60 of those will be actual books. So we're ahead of schedule on both cases here. Uh, let's get into some of my most read authors for the month. Now, obviously, if I read 16 manga and they were all from the same content, that was berserk. Uh, Kentaro Miura is leading the charge with 16 books read this year. Uh, no big shocker here in second place is my guy, Side King, Stephen King, with 10 books thus far and then we're doing that great Michael Crichton reread so uh, I have five books by the man so far because we didn't start that read along until February so you know we got five of those down and about another year I think to go on Crichton and then four books because of the Malazan channel read along in case you didn't know there is a Malazan channel read along uh, that is Mr. Stephen Erickson and pulling up in fifth place here with three books is Mrs. Robin Hobb the first lady of epic fantasy I read the uh, the Farser trilogy over you know, the winter and uh, the only reason that I didn't continue going with that for now is because our Malazan schedule changed so I had to kind of push back Realm of the Eldings till next year but I will be continuing that series with live ship sometime next year so yes uh, some of the usual suspects in there King and Crichton and some new ones obviously if you told me at the beginning of the year that Kentaro Miura would be my most read author at this point I've been like what? What happened? <laughs> Did he start doing some uh, Stephen King content uh, in, in manga that I missed? Anyway, so that is uh, something I think is always kind of fun to track. And there's obviously several others with two or less. But I want to get into all that. What I want to do now is talk about my top 10 books that I have read so far this year. But now, these are not in any order. I have not ranked these or nothing. I'll save that for the end of the year. I There's a few I can't make a decision on. But what I want to say is, is I am not counting rereads. So King and Crichton stuff psh, doesn't count. I'm not going to count anything that I have already read before in this list. But these are my top 10 stories that I've read that are not rereads this year. And again, these are not in any order. These are not ranked at all. Obviously, I'm going to count Berserk as one story here. And I definitely think it deserves a place on this list because I've said I think that has one of the best coming of age epic fantasy stories I've ever read. And I've read a lot of them. So uh, definitely high recommend on that one. Lots of content on the channel for that if you're curious about Berserk. Then I got to say Project Hail Mary. What a fun, fun ride that was. That was my book of the month for June. So I figured it would be on this list for sure. But 
but uh, absolutely just a blast, and I cannot recommend it enough for everyone. All audiences are going to appreciate Project Hail Mary. Then we got Shadow of the Gods. That is the new and a first series by my guy, John Gwynn. I love the Banished Lands, and he's created this new land with a Bloodsworn saga. And one book in... I'm happy to say uh, it's just as good as the first 70s. John Gwynn is an author. I think that uh, I've got to start saying I can't consider him a new author anymore because I've read eight books by him. And you know what? I've loved all eight. So, yeah, he's automatic on my list at this point. Then I did Heir of Novron. Yes, I'm cheating. I'm counting it as, as one book. That is uh, book five, Wintertide, and book six, Persepliquis of the Raira Revelations. But since they sell it in that bind-up, I'm going to count it as one book here, but Michael J. Solomon is well on his way to becoming an automatic author. When I did my power rankings, I said I already kind of considered him an automatic author, and I'd only read four books at the time. But with the way that Raya Revelations ended, yeah, it just further cemented that. He's definitely going to be one that I continue to read everything he writes. I should be dipping into Legends of the First Empire. First time I got a lull in the schedule, I'm going to dip into that first Legends of the First Empire book, because I can't wait to see how he does when he's not writing about Royce and Hadrian. I'm really, really interested in that. And you know I wasn't going to have this list without King on it. Revival. I read this back in January. It was one I didn't read when it first came out for a story that most people on this channel know by now. Uh, I just, I was blown away. I did not expect to like it as much as I did. Again, his bread and butter is not just the scares. It's not just the frights. It is the coming of age story. And again, he displays that he can do this better than anyone else. He knows how kids talk, act, and think. It's amazing. And he continues to do that uh, with this book, as well as later. Yes, I got two books on here by King this year. Later and Revival are both just fantastic reads. Later, you can read in an afternoon. It's a really short, hard crime. It's under the hard crime uh, novel, the label, but it, it, guys, it's, it's just a ghost story, and it's fantastic. I think you'll like it. Really, to me, it felt like vintage Stephen King. Uh, I know there are some other big, tu big bigger booktubers who did not care for it. Well, I'm a Stephen King uh, maniac, and I loved it. So uh, I, I say form that opinion on your own because it just seems like the opinions are just you know really, really far apart on those. But to me, it felt like a return to form for King, which I felt like he's been doing quite consistently, uh, probably since The Outsider. So I'm excited to see what he does uh, in August with Billy Summer. Should be a lot of fun. But Later and Revival, both outstanding books. Recommend. Highest recommends. And I've got some Malazan in here, guys. Believe it or not, Dead House Gates is my favorite. Now, I know everybody just about has been Memories of Ice. has been their favorite. For me, Dead House Gates it started slow, but it ended so amazing that I, it's still in my head here months, months later. So, uh, yeah, I, it definitely deserves a place on this list because I still think about uh, that book quite often. And just one of the most just just you're just gonna be wrecked by the end of that book. It's just it's so, so good. But um, yeah, I, I was going to definitely have some malice on this list. I, I didn't think that anybody thought that I wouldn't. And just like that, guys. Oh, where are all the sci fi books? Hyperion by Dan Simmons absolutely met all of the hype that I had for it. And I had been anticipating reading that book for like 25, 30 years now. And it met those expectations. It really is. I say right now, it's one of my three favorite sci-fi books of all time, along with Dune and Ender's Game. It's just fantastic. It is as good as you've heard. It's probably better than you've heard. I think there's a little bit of something for everyone in that book. So watch that review if you haven't, because I tell you exactly what I mean by that. And uh, it deserves more than these 30 seconds of kind of a, a little a quick little promo that I'm going to give it here because it's just fantastic, guys. Then we do have Assassin's Apprentice. Yes, shockingly enough, this is the one that everybody said, hey, don't judge the rest of Farce here off of Assassin's Apprentice because it's uh, the rest of it's better. I disagree. Again, coming of age story. That's my thing. And she does it spectacular with that. I really, really was into that. Yes, yes, there was no night eyes in the book, but you know what? Uh, it was a really good coming of age story for Fitz. And I really, really enjoyed the relationship that developed with him, him, and, and, and Birch quite a bit. I think that it was done very, very well. And uh, yeah, that's the, the definitely, without a doubt, without even thinking about it. That was my favorite one. I felt like they kind of got more bloated and less focused along the way. But Assassin's Apprentice, it was just beginning to end. I loved it. It was fantastic. I, I, I hope to see more in that style and less in the Assassin's Quest style. But that's a different conversation, of course. And then I'll close off with another sci-fi thriller. I felt like this was like a new age Michael Crichton book. This was Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. What a thrill ride this book was. I did not expect to like it 
as much as I did. People have been telling me for years, hey, I think he'd like Blake Crouch. Uh, he really does feel like a throwback to Michael Crichton. I was like, okay, well, that's a kind of a high bar. You know, you kind of got my expectations super high. Met him, exceeded him. For just a terrific book. I'm very much looking forward to doing recursion sometime later this year when I get a moment because I think that these will be really good, like a Crichton book, and that, hey, you know what? I want something that's not a series. I want something that's not super heavy. What can I just get into? And that is definitely the right answer. And that's my 10, guys. That's my 10 so far this year that I would say are above the rest. Now, I like to stay positive on this channel. You guys know that. So if I'm going to talk about books I think were somewhat of, I don't know, a disappointment, uh, I don't want you guys to take it personally. These are just books that I might have had high expectations for. I'm definitely not saying they're bad. I'm just saying there's some books that, that kind of let me down. I just did not expect to not feel it with them. Uh, but I, I had, it was actually kind of hard to narrow this down. There have been kind of a couple of misses here. Um, I guess an uh, honorable mention before I get going, I'll say Fall of Hyperion was not the sequel that I wanted to Hyperion. But uh, I'll save that for when I finally do get around to that review, guys. People think, oh, is it so bad you're just not doing the review? No, guys, I'm just busy. I'm just busy and other stuff is just more time sensitive. So uh, I, I will get to it eventually. Uh, it's, just, it's just how things work. But uh, I, I don't think it's enough to qualify in these top three here, but I did want to kind of give it a, a, a mention there. But okay, my three biggest disappointments, obviously you heard the last one, Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. I don't feel like you should have took 900 pages to tell the story that you told and then still have the ending feel rushed and forced. I feel like there should be nothing in a book that long that feels rushed or forced. So yes, I, I want people to understand something here. When I say I was disappointed with that book, uh, I, people think that means I'm like insulting her talent. Absolutely not. I've said millions of times, I think she is an insanely talented writer. Like her prose is fantastic. I am not one of those people who gives a damn about prose, but when it's really good, I notice it. And she's definitely one of the best I've seen. I just don't need 900 pages of it. For me, it's like uh, what I said about Name of the Wind. Okay, yeah, great. He's a beautiful writer. Where's the story? Where's the story? That's what I want. I still want my characters and my story to lead the way. I don't need you describing hills and bushes to me over and over and over again. So that's why that book was kind of a letdown for me because it did that. And then, like I said, I felt like the ending was super, super rushed and forced and it just it did not feel like a good payoff for me. It didn't feel earned, which is amazing, like I said, with a book that long. But again, guys, people have told me the Farster Trilogy is probably one of her weaker outings as far as the whole realm of the Eldlings go. So there you go. I, I liked the first two books quite a bit. Third one was a big miss for me, for sure. Then I got to say, Lisey's Story by Stephen King. So all you people who say, oh, well, you, no matter what Stephen King puts out, you love. No, guys. Did you watch the Tommyknockers review? But yeah, Lisey's Story, definitely in my bottom third of Stephen King stories. But you got to think when this guy has, you know, 60, 70 books, not everything's going to be a home run. Every once in a while, you're just going to hit a single or, you know, a ground rule double maybe. Uh, but this one, I, I definitely wouldn't call it a bad book. I felt like King was definitely trying to change some things up. Uh, at that point, I feel like, you're, Stephen, you're, you're set enough in your ways. You don't need to change your style uh, because the narrative structure that he used in it, we got flashbacks. We got flashbacks within those flashbacks. And it's not until about the 60% into the book where you understand what half this terminology he's using and you understand anything about what's going on. And, you know, I, I'm fine with that, waiting for that payoff. But it just, it, the first half really, really suffered because of it. Now, the back half, very rewarding and it, it really did have some satisfying things about it it just kind of took too long to get there so i'm not going to just kind of pretend that that didn't happen you know so uh yeah it definitely was one i was very excited about going back to because i heard such great things about it uh it just kind of kind of missed the mark for me so i don't know if it was expectations or not but i just i don't know i, I hold king to a higher standard and that was a. Uh, not not what I'm usually used to with Cy King there. And then lastly, and this one's uh, probably going to be like a oh, oh, clutch your pearls kind of moment here, uh, the Murderbot Diaries. Uh, I read All Systems Red. Didn't get it, I guess. Uh, maybe that's what people were telling me. You just you just didn't get it. I, it was about a robot watching soap operas. I, I, I do not understand why people call this hilarious. I, I just completely missed the humor. I found nothing touching interesting or funny about it enough to where i was like i had the second third and fourth ones on my on my schedule and i just i just took them off i'm not saying i won't ever revisit it it's just uh it, people have said well if you didn't really like that then uh, it might not be it didn't really change along the way that's enough for me to say okay well it's just definitely not going to be my thing i know people love it i know it's like a reddit darling people on reddit absolutely love this um 
I uh, get starting to get to the point where I say like, hey, if uh, Rotten, if Rotten uh, Tomatoes critics hate a movie, I usually end up loving it. Uh, I'm starting to think the same way. If Reddit absolutely loves a book, uh, maybe you need to think about that. I don't know. Maybe just me. Murderbot just didn't do it for me. And that was my my three biggest disappointments so far this year because I, I had pretty high expectations for all of them and I felt like they kind of let me down. I do want to kind of do a hat tip. Uh, to Siege and Storm. That's the second Shadow and Bone book. Now, look, I know I'm not the target demographic there. And the reason I'm not including it on here is because I never had high expectations for those books anyway. So I can't call them uh, a disappointment. But I have hope that the Netflix series will continue to be better than those books because the uh, season one absolutely was better than the first uh, Shadow and Bone book. So there we go, guys. That is kind of it. Let's talk a quick little minute here about some channel growth so far in 2021. 12,514 new subscribers. Obviously, that is a slower rate than we had last year, but the, the channel was still on very much on its upward trajectory last year. We're starting to stabilize, kind of found our, 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 our I want to say like, yeah, like stabilization. We just kind of, we're going to stay in this kind of rate for a while now. And I think this is just, this is like the normal and that's fine. I, I love this audience size. I feel like I can still really be there for this audience and not feel like everything gets just slips between the cracks because I just can't keep up with it. And uh, that, that is awesome. 1.7 million views so far in 2021 and one uh, 254,000 hours of watch time. So I hope you guys have been mildly entertained and will continue to be as we move along. Let's talk about some of the most popular content so far of 2021. Now these guys, these uh, these were kind of surprising to me because uh, I, I'm like, how how is this channel still growing? Because when I look at this, I was like, 2021 doesn't have a huge, huge, like any videos that were just like gigantic, you know? Now look, I haven't done a Kindle video this year, so you know that isn't gonna be on there. But when I looked at it, I was like, okay, I look at like you, analytics on YouTube will show you like your top 10 most watched stuff for each month. And consistently it's videos from 2020 or 2019 on there. So people are still finding those old videos and still watching those old videos. So there we go. That it was, it was something for me I had to be like, oh, okay, well, I guess 2021 isn't bringing in as big a numbers as I thought. It's a, so, much, so much of the audience is still discovering some of those old videos because, guys, there's a lot of content on the channel now. You know, if you just found the place, there's plenty of it to go back to on the archives. But okay, let's talk about the ones that have had the biggest numbers so far, the five. Top 10 fantasy series for beginners is at 21,000 views. Always a lot of fun to talk about. There's a lot of people who uh, found the channel through that horror video I did that has like 125,000 views. And they're like, hey, I found your channel through that. I'm not really into fantasy though. Where would you recommend I start? And that's where I got the idea for that. So I thought that was a very good way. And a lot of people were like, I can't believe you didn't put this, this, or this. Well, guys, I'm putting the ones that I've read. If I haven't read it, obviously, I'm not going to recommend other people do it. So that's always going to be my thing with top 10 lists. It has to be something I've actually consumed before I can talk about it. And then um, I'm not going to count them individually, but all my Berserk vids are between 12 and 13,000 views as of recording this. So obviously that's going to be the big one. Brought in a lot of new viewers that are not usually into just the content that I do. And that's cool. I hope that maybe they'll branch out and check out some other stuff on the channel. But I will be covering more manga in the future. So uh, love it or hate it, it's going to happen. Uh, my book hauls for January and February both are about 12,000 views. Those went down just a little bit. They're, they edge around 9,000, 10,000 views now. But that's cool. People love seeing new books. And I love to thank people who send me stuff. So it's great. Uh, more original Original content here though, Gardens of the Moon, the first Malazan book. This is my standard review is also at 12,000 views. I think that's because when the, the when the read-along started, guys, that Wars band was just massive. I mean, it was huge. I mean, there was so many people uh, participating. I couldn't keep up with it. And I knew that that would drop off. And it has dropped off along the way. It's a normal <laughs> range now that, that I feel like you can keep up with it. Before, it was just like, there's just so much going on. But people were really interested in knowing if they should go ahead and try it. That's why those spoiler talk videos have been a lot. Because a lot of people are like, this is a lot. I'm having a hard time keeping up. But uh, yeah, I, I figured Guardians of the Moon, that coverage would probably... Whenever you do any kind of series, I feel like the earlier stuff's going to get the most attention because you get people to bail out along the way. I mean, you even go back and look at the Stormlight Archive videos. Obviously, the first book, Way of Kings, has more, way more views than everything else in that. So that's just, that's normal for any series. It's just the views are going to kind of go down as you go along. You, I mean, you can put out, I mean, I used to put out those Will of Time videos, the reviews that were really popular, and I would put them out in two parts, and part two never got as much attention as part one. I mean, that's just, that's just how YouTube works, guys. And then last up, the good and the bad of Wheel of Time, 12,000 views. And some of the funniest comments I think I've ever read. Go read them. Go read them. I, I, I challenge you to go read those and not laugh about it. Uh, I like to talk about a couple of like my personal favorites usually in this section. 
some things that maybe didn't have the big numbers of, of views, but just stuff that I really enjoy making. Guys, for me, it's, it's always the Stephen King stuff. Uh, I know the King's never going to be huge on BookTube like uh, like like fantasy is. I think the, the 15 to 24 fantasy is always going to be like the money maker on YouTube. That's why a lot of the content creators that are younger than me have much bigger platforms because uh, they do talk about these things. I try to talk about adult fantasy, horror, and science fiction. So uh, I, I know I'm going to kind of stick to that that thing there. But I'm always going to talk about Stephen King because that's my guy. That's my favorite author ever. So obviously I love taking that. But some really memorable ones I've had so far this year. I talked about It, my favorite Stephen King book ever. I could talk about that book for hours. That's why it's the third time I've reviewed it on this channel. <laughs> Different format each time. Uh, Misery, another really great one. I love talking about that. And then Tommy Knockers. I've been looking forward to doing that review ever since I started Into the Multiverse because it's just so crazy. Another one I'd be remiss not to mention was my responding to my most common criticism video. That was fun because it was a time there were there was some things going on like guys you don't know there's a lot of drama with those younger groups on booktube they like to start shit they like to make accusations they like to try to get people kicked off the internet you know that kind of stuff so yeah there was uh, some stuff going on and a lot of people were really really mad at me for a minute i was getting a lot of nasty emails a lot of nasty comments and things like that. And that's going to happen. You put yourself out here publicly, it's going to happen. People love to do that. Uh, but uh, at the time, I was like, you know, this is a good idea because people are like, how, do, how does this not, stop, like, like not drive you crazy? And I'm like, if you, if, you, if you get bothered by what strangers on the internet say about you, you're going to be very, very miserable. So to me, it was really just kind of showing people, this is how I handle criticism. I laugh at it. I think it's hilarious. I listen to positive feedback, constructive feedback. I listen to it. And I made many changes on this channel based off of feedback from viewers you know i don't feel like that's something that is bad you definitely listen to your people uh but when it's people just being complete jerks about it uh yeah i laugh about it and you listen to some of the comments i mean how, how do you not laugh at some of those things i talk about in there so i wanted to kind of talk about it back then because it was when a lot of stuff was fresh and i was saying like yeah yeah i get some really really nasty stuff said to me and it's hilarious but you know what 99% of the stuff that gets said to me on the channel is positive. You know, I get people writing me personal handwritten letters that send me in the mail telling me how much this channel really helped them in the last couple of years. And that to me is everything or how I've helped someone rediscover reading, you know, their love of reading. That is everything. That's why I started this channel, guys. So that'll always be something uh, special. So that's why I wanted to kind of address that criticism and why I think it's hilarious. You know, it's, it's you just can't let it bother you. Let's get into a little bit uh, of goals for the rest of the year. Obviously, 50,000 subscribers has been the big goal for the rest of the year. Uh, I did kind of move up that hoping i can hit it by my birthday on august the 4th that would be a lot of fun just a nice birthday present hit that fifty thousand subs just because you know again it's just a number it doesn't really matter obviously views and watch time is what matters on youtube really for the for the you know the, the algorithm gods uh that, that's fine but it's just fun to say you know hey when i started this i thought five thousand was like my ceiling <laughs> probably 1,000. Uh, so uh, yeah, I never expected to get this far. So I, I just think 50. Obviously, that's a big, big milestone. And uh, hey, who knows? Maybe we can hit 100,000 by the time I stop doing this. Who knows when that'll be? But uh, it's, it's, just, it's just fun. I, I think my biggest goal, though, going forward for this channel is finding a way to get this large audience I have amassed to watch videos on books they haven't read. Uh, I get a lot of people are like, well, hey, you gotta you gotta move to non-spoiler videos because yeah, people that uh, people that haven't read it aren't gonna watch it if it's just a spoiler talk, okay? And then you make non-spoiler videos and people are like, oh, well, I haven't read it, so I'm not gonna watch it. So it's like, well, well what's the what's the fine line here? If I do spoiler, you're not gonna watch it because it's ruined it for you. If I do non-spoiler, you're not interested in watching it if you haven't already read it. I don't really understand what the fine line is here. Do you want me to recommend this book to you or not? Listen to the non-spoiler. All my reviews, guys, are non-spoiler. I get that all the time. Well, I haven't read it yet, so I don't want to be spoiled. It's a non-spoiler review. I don't spoil anything in those reviews. My reviews flat out say, spoiler talk, real big, if it's a spoiler discussion. Everything else is non-spoiler because I'm trying to sell you on watching it. So if I can get more constant viewers to watch videos on books they haven't read and then make a decision of, hey, you know what? That actually surprisingly sounds like something I could read. That's kind of the goal of everything here. So that would be something I'd like to try to kind of work on. And then, of course, guys, continue to be open to some of these crossover episodes. You know, I've, I've guessed it on some channels, Philip Chase's channel, people like that. It's, it's a lot of fun to talk to those other content creators because they're just, you know, salt of the earth. They're great people, and I love talking to them. And that's why I started this was to have other people I know to talk to about books, you know, because there's so many people in my real life that don't 
read this kind of stuff. So it, that's kind of why I started. So getting to talk to some of the other content creators who love this as much as I do, it's a lot of fun to do that. So I'd like to have more kind of crossover episodes. I'm supposed to be talking to Jaime and Fuego. Uh, that's a Stephen King, uh, the, the, the the master of Stephen King, in my opinion, from the horror show. I'm going to be talking to him soon. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Moy from Media Death Cult soon. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to be uh, having a video with uh, Sarah Reeds. Lots of fun stuff coming up here in the new year, and I can't wait to do that. But in the end, guys, I just want to continue to make this a positive and welcoming place for everybody. I hear a lot of content creators out there that say, hey, if you think this, 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 or this, I don't want you on my channel. Guys, I don't care what you do in your personal life. I don't care uh, what you do. If you're here to talk about books, I'm here to talk about books with you. That's what this channel is always going to be, and you're always going to be welcome no matter what you believe on your own personal time. So that's just kind of the community that I've wanted to build. It's a positive community, and I want to keep it that way, and everyone is welcome. That is the best thing that I can offer to people. Everyone is welcome here if you want to talk about books because that's what this channel is always going to be, first and foremost, is about the books and about engaging with the audience. So guys, that was 2021 so far. What would you say your favorite book of this year is drop in the comments and let me know and I will talk to you there.